Okay, so at this point, you've probably done translations, you might have done reflections, and then you get to rotations, and it's like, what now? So the reality of rotations is they're not nearly as difficult as they seem. It's just hard to think about it. And then you get the rules, and it's sort of like, well, why do the rules work the way that they work? Well, really what we're doing is we're going to kind of spin around this origin. And this video is focused specifically on rotation about the origin. If you have another rotation that's not about the origin, find a different video, I guess. Um, but some things that we should know, the quadrants. We organize all of this, the Cartesian axis, the coordinate plane, whatever you want to call it, into four quadrants. This is kind of the, quadrant one is kind of the positive positive. Quadrant two, you'll notice the y value is still positive, so we're still up, but we're in the negative area for the x's. For three, everything is a mess. It's both negative, x and y. And for the fourth quadrant, our y values are negative, but our x values are positive. So when we do rotations, we have to think, okay, what's changing? What's moving around? And the most difficult thing to think about is if I do partial rotations, like 90 degrees or 270, it actually changes the relationship with the axis. So let's talk about that uh, in just a minute. The first thing we're going to look at is a 360 degree rotation. It's a circle, right? So it just goes all the way around. So you end up back where you started. So the 360 degree rotation rule is X and Y become X and Y. Uh, it's like a bad story where you go through all this stuff and nothing changes. 180 degrees is different. So in this case, I'm going to go halfway to my journey, but I end up down in the third quadrant. And it doesn't matter if I'm going clockwise or counterclockwise. I'll end up in the same spot. So the X and Y values stay the same. The only difference is I'm going to change their sign. And we're not going to say negative X, negative Y here. We're going to say opposite. So if I have this point here, which is at negative 6, 4, and I want to do a 180 degree rotation, it's just going to change the signs on both because it moves from an area in quadrant 2 that is negative x but positive y down here, which is positive x, negative y. So my rotation would be at 6, negative 4. So I'm going to go to 6, I'm going to go down to negative 4, and make a point right there. That's where that's located. So 180 degrees, keep the order, x and y stay the same, but you do want to change those signs on both. And if it's positive, it becomes negative. If it's negative, it becomes positive. You know the whole thing. So that's how that you want that one to work. Now, for 90 degree rotations, it's a little bit different. It's also very similar to 270 degrees. The reason it's different is because the relationship with the axis sort of shifts around a little bit. When I do 180, it goes all the way around, so the relationship basically stays the same. But if I do 90, I'm actually taking this and rotating it down here. But you'll notice that this distance is 1, 2, 3, 4 away, whereas this distance from this is 6. And actually, let me change the color on that one. Now when I rotate it down, the relationship shifts considerably. Instead of being over 6, you actually go down 6. And instead of going up 4, you go over 4. So I end up with a point. Sorry, I end up with a point right here. Because I need to keep that relationship the same. So I'm going to do this. So this line goes all the way down to 6, and this goes all the way over to 4. But you'll notice it's kind of different. This one seems a little bit more to the left. It's further down than this is up, but that's just the relationship of 90 degrees. Take a piece of paper, spin it, and you'll see it doesn't move. If you only go a fourth, it actually changes the order. So once we get to 90 degree rotations and 270 degree rotations, we have to do an extra step. So I'll put 90 clock, 90 counter, clockwise, 270 clock, 270 counter. The big change here 
is that you want to flip x and y. And then you do your changing. Change signs is needed. So I'm going to do a 90 degree clockwise rotation with this. It's currently at 6 and 4. So I'm going to change the order 4, 6. And you'll notice that my um, y value is now negative, where the x value is still positive. So what used to be the um, y can stay just fine here, but your uh, x value is going to be the opposite, and this is for a clockwise rotation. So this becomes like this. 4, negative 6. That's where that rotation is shown. So my rule for that is x, y, y negative x or opposite x I should say so if I have <clears throat> this one over here which is at negative 6 and 4 if I want to do a clockwise rotation by the way if you don't know how that goes uh, clockwise goes this way and counterclockwise goes this way so Going this way, I'm going to do a clockwise rotation, so it goes through noon and on over. The first thing I'm going to do is change the order, so 4, 6. And remember, I'm going to change whatever that original x value was, the sign of it. So the original x value was here at negative 6, now it becomes positive 6, so my rotation becomes 4 and 6 right up here. Which would make sense if I rotated into the first quadrant. They should both be positive, right? Okay. Let's, um, sorry, my thing dropped out. I had to bring it back. Let's do a counterclockwise rotation, which is a little bit different. Now, when we do a counterclockwise rotation, we're not going this way, so we're not going to, like, drop that Y out uh, per se. What we're going to do instead is we're going to move it this way, which means that the uh, X value is the thing that's going to kind of pitter around and do whatever it needs to do. So, if I take my 6, 4, and I flip these around. The point I'm going to look for is going to be negative over here, so I'm going to change this one. Negative 4 and 6. So right here is my point, because again, it's 4 away from this, and now it's 4 away from this. So what's the rule there? Like, how do we figure out the rule? Well, we take our original x, y, And again, we're going to change that order around. But this time, instead of changing our original x, I'm going to change our original y. Because they're the opposites, right? So our original y value was 4. Now it's just going to be negative 4, and it's going to be in the x. If I was going to do c, for instance, down here, see this? It's currently at negative 2, negative 3. If I want to do a counterclockwise uh, rotation, I'm not going to go this way. I'm going to go this way. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the order, 3 and 2. And I'm going to change that original y value. So this 3 becomes positive 3. This 2 stays negative 2. Because I'm moving into a quadrant that has positive x values and negative y values. In fact, if you could just remember like what quadrant it's in now and what the relationship is to where it's going to end up, you don't really need the rules. You can remember that if it's 90 or 270, you flip and then just use your mind to think, okay, well, that's what the rule is going to be. So that's clockwise versus counterclockwise. Let's look at 270 degrees. What's 270 degrees? Well, that would be three different rotations. And again, these uh, eraser situations are not ideal, but we're going to try to make it work. This thing's almost over. Um, for 270, again, we're kind of stuck in our little universe where uh, we won't 
have we'll have to flip the x and y because it's not a full rotation it's just a rotation of um, three this time so we'll start at a again at good old six four and if we do a three 270 clockwise rotation we're going to go one two three now recall if you will um, that we said the first thing that you need to do is flip those around yep I agree with that. So instead of being six and four, it's going to be four and six. But what do we need to change? Well, we went from something where they're both positive to where the x values are negative. So I need to take my original y value and make it negative. So negative four, six. So the rule for clockwise rotations of 270. would be negative y and x. So we took our original y, made it an x, and then 6. But wait a minute, that's the same rule as this one. Yep, because they're going to the exact same place. Going counterclockwise to this is the same as going clockwise to this. Key piece of information, you probably worked out that the counterclockwise rule for 270 is the same as the clockwise rule for 90. And yes, it is. y negative x. So say I have this point C here, and it's currently sitting at negative 3, negative 2. Now, counterclockwise is, of course, going this way, and I'm going to go 270. So it's going to take me all the way up here. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the order. And then I'm going to say, okay, so it went from the uh, Y value kind of, or the x value is still going to be negative. It's still going to be stuck there. So I'm going to end up changing the one that's up here. It's the y that's going to be in the positive. So this negative 2 thing still exists. So negative 2 and 3. So I have that point right there. Does that follow the rule? So originally I had x and y. Well, I'm going to uh, keep the y and just make it in the x. And I'm going to change the sign on the original x value, which is negative 3, to positive. So that's how you do rotations. If it's 90 degrees or 270, flip the order and then either remember the rule or think, well, what happened to the point when I moved it? It was in this quadrant. Now it's down here. Where now that it's down here, that point's going to have a positive x or whatever. Uh, and just make your adjustments. For 360 and 180, if it's 360, keep them. They didn't move. And then 180, just change the um, signs on them, but keep the order.